I got it. All right, so we'll call the February 7th Park and Rec meeting to order at 6.34. Um, it doesn't look like there's any public forum because that phone number is me. Um, and there was no correspondence, Rick. There was nothing in the packet. That's correct. And we have John coming in now, so we got everybody. That's correct, no correspondence. So then we can move right on to the approval of the January 10th Park and Rec meeting. I'll make a motion Any to approve. Any changes or anything? Hmm. Questions? No? Can we get a motion to approve the January 10th minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the January 10th commission meeting minutes. I can Nick. All in favor? Aye. Hi. Hi. I wasn't here last week, last month, last week, last month. <laughs> Feels like it. Feels All like right. it. All right, moving right along then. Um, approval of the January um, expenses. Yeah, let me, if I can, uh, it's a different format. So I want to just tell you about it a little bit. Um, and it's good. I hope you like it because what it does, what this has done is saved uh, Jen probably two or three hours of work. This is the rec track report. What she used to have to do is take this information and then put it into an Excel sheet. And it took a long time to do that. But Ellen worked with her to create this uh, report. It has some stuff on it that you might, well, I'll explain a couple of things. But um, like, like the top of the page is high school math team transportation. Now you're wondering, what is that? <laughs> um, that doesn't necessarily have to be on there, but what it is, it's, it's a, it just shows up in the report. It's a reimbursement. Um, the high school math team requested to use one of our buses. And so we charge, you know, which, if it's going out of state or out of town, you know, we charge for the, the labor for the driver uh, and gas, depending where they're going. So uh, that's what that was. Um, and um, the other one you might see that's, that we had a little confusion on, on page two Undergrounds main is you see three credits there. Um, the one of them is the Rotary Club. So we rented Portage Johns for the Frosty 5K race for New Year's Day, but they reimburse us for it. So it, it, it's a credit. It doesn't affect the bills really. It just it just shows up in the report. Um, so and, and I'll I'll stop in a second because if you have any questions, but the 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 bottom line in the back page, the one that you're will be approving is on the left side the debit column which is 120,577.91 because the other ones are credits so you don't you don't need to prove the credits it's it's the the actual bills which totals at 120,577.91 so i just want to give you a little explanation it's a little different format it's got all the same information and, and actually more information that the other report had but i want to just explain that a little bit so you you knew why it looks different Thank you. i like it better i do too Seems um, like there's less. <clears throat> seems like there's less. Seems to me. Well, the reason I like yeah, it, honestly, it seems to me is like the way it's it's like it's not so, you know, overwhelming. I actually think it's interesting to see the credits. I know it doesn't affect. I, I don't know, like to see, you know, it's helping other parts of the community. You know, if we're if we're helping with the rotary or the high school and seeing those credits. I think that's good, but I like it actually because it comes up facing the right way on my computer. <laughs> I don't print things out. Yes. <laughs> it's easier to read. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Are there any questions about the? Yeah. Yes, I just had one for Rick on page two um, under building maintenance. Um, a four slice toaster, four hundred and fifteen dollars. I, I assume that's not your standard black and decker uh, <sighs> put on the countertop four slice toaster. I thought the same thing. <laughs> well, you know, we want to have good good bagels for the staff. Uh, no, <laughs> that's uh, that's in the kitchen. That's for the kitchen. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a you know, it's a, like institutional commercial quality that Larry needs for you know what he's doing there. Okay, that's fine. I just you. I just want to clarify in my mind that it, that it was. <laughs> A, a true you, institutional toaster. We, we have in the community center budget every year that you guys all approve. There's a line item for, I think it's $2,500 for kitchen 
supplies, repairs, anything to go with that. So Larry knows he's got that available. And so he had to replace that toaster. And that, that's why that shows up there. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Have a good question. <laughs> that's it. Now, all right, can we get a motion to approve the January bills? I make a motion to approve the January bills for the amount of 120,577.91. Laura seconds it. Thank you, Laura. Just to, just to prove um, I'm still here. <laughs> um, okay, then we need to do a vote. Um, all in favor? Aye. I moving right along. All right. Um, department reports. Um, one, one correction on mine, <clears throat> number four, uh, the 2022-23 proposed budget presented to BOS and should be BOF, Board of Finance, not Board of Education. And and Rose went and you know we uh, when we got there, we you know we said well, well Rose came to help put present a rosy picture of the budget. Uh, did we <laughs> ever? Did but, uh, we ever? It went well, I think. Don't you think overall the, the presentation? I think it went I think it went very well. Um and I you know I I'm pleased with with their reaction to what we proposed. And the other thing I'm 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 kind you know I'm really kind well are we going to talk about that after um, it is well, I found our budget, so I'll talk about it when we get to unfinished business. Okay. But I thought it went well. Um, I'm thrilled that we had seven days of uh, skating at Mill Pond. Yeah. Um, I, and I was hoping we'd get more. The snow we got the other last week, uh, I had Tony, it was clearing it off on Wednesday. We knew we were going to get, we thought, a little rain on Thursday. And it was supposed to get colder Friday, Saturday. I was hoping we could get it over for the weekend. Um, but it, it, it rained all Thursday and all Friday. I mean, it didn't really stop much. And there, I went out there Saturday morning and there was a, a little bit of a layer of ice. Um, it was, a, it was like a sandwich. There was a, a, you know, the ice underneath it, which was eight inches deep, thick, but then there was a layer of water and another thin layer of ice on top of that. If you step down, you can see the water, like a bubble moving out underneath it. And somebody actually stepped through the ice by the steps uh, and crashed through it. Um, but Tony was able to get out there and measure it today. We have eight inches, uh, but it's wow. short, inner, but out, you know, in the, you know, where we can get out a bit, it's eight inches. But yeah, the seven, um, seven days we had were good. There was one Sunday, I think I might've put in, there were a hundred people. I wasn't there that day. I think it was the day after my son's wedding. Um, but I was told that there were 70 people on the pond, about 30 around the fire. Somebody actually brought shish kebab and they were cooking shish kebab over the fire and hot dogs and marshmallows and making s'mores. It's wonderful. It's just a great That's thing. Awesome. Um, you know, the times I did go out there, people were just so thrilled that it was open and a lot of hockey playing going on and, and, and just recreational skating. And um, I was able to bring my one and four year old granddaughters. They'd never seen ice before. And they, they loved Aww. it. <laughs> the That's just so nice. Around in the sleds. But, um, but anyway, yeah, it's the skating seven days. Is, That's the most we've had in a long time. I'd say at least okay. 10 years. Yeah. And on, it's not over yet. We could have some cold February days, you know, and the rain we're getting now will really, if it freezes, it'll be a, a really nice surface. So um, we'll see how it goes. But but yeah, it's so, far, so far, it's been a pretty good season for it. Hey, Rick, just a quick question on the uh, number five with regard to park crew de uh, deployment. Did you say in the past that park and rec are responsible for cleaning the parking lot um, behind the foods, the old food center, the um, yeah, that tr that U-shaped parking lot that's over by the uh, uh, oh my god, I can't think of the name of uh, Baloo's yeah. marketplace here. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, there's one. There's there are three different organizations that are plowing there. There, there are two contractors that work with whoever owns the building by Baloo's and the, the building behind um, uh, some Siam like that area. Yeah. Uh, food center, there are different owners. So they plow that section. We have the front section where you come in, uh, the main entrance there, that, that's town owned. And so we have to plow that. We also plow a segment of the St. George Park a lot, which is an agreement that was made with um, the store owners there because they, they uh, didn't have enough parking uh, for those stores. And so 
there was an agreement made beyond beyond us <laughs> that we were going to plow a portion of St. George, which is open to the, um, I think the people who work in those stores are supposed to park there so that the- Yeah, that, that parking, I mean, our drive, not driveway, pavement um, between the church and the uh, parking lot. That's, I, I know you guys plow that one because, because that's very helpful for, you know, for parking for church. Yeah. But, but what happened in the last storm, we had two guys who were sick with COVID. Um, another one had resigned about a week before that. Uh, another one was away. So we had, um, we had two full-time guys to work. Let me see, two? Yeah, we had one of our guys, two of our guys always helped public works. One of them was, was sick and couldn't help. Um, again, long-standing agreement forever. Uh, one of our, two of our guys plowed for them. Um, so we had one guy in the parking lot. We normally have two and, and this, there was quite a bit of snow. We had nine or 10 inches. So I contacted Cliff at Board of Ed and he gave us a guy to spend all day Saturday, just helping us in the parking lots, which was a huge help. Nice guy, did a great job. And, um, you know, hats off to, to Cliff for helping us out because the guys were in anyway, he's got six guys to do their parking lots. We had one. And so, uh, he was able to help us out. It got done um guys came back on sunday that was saturday came back sunday had to do some some more cleanup and we're still doing more on monday but it was there was you know a lot of snow to move around and unfortunately mm -hmm. things happened like i said one guy resigned uh about two weeks ago one was away and two were sick so we had less than half of our crew anyway do, do we have a uh, like a, a small john deere type tractor that we use for for this for the sidewalk, well, well, for the parking lots, we use a, a plow truck, you know, uh, uh, okay. uh, F550. But in the sidewalks, we have, uh, it's called the vent, the vent track. It's got a cab on it. it. It's very powerful. It does an excellent job for, um, I mean, you can't lose it like it's the town hall, the library. I mean, you know, around the community center, but they do the long stretches on the green. We have to plow, we do the sidewalk all the way from uh, Whitfield Street, all the way down to um, over the bridge all the way to the marina. We mm -hmm. do that, the, a section down by Chittenden Park, uh, River Street, we have to go from Broad Street to Route 1. We were given two more assignments this year. There's a little stretch of sidewalk over Route 1 bridge, um, um, just over the West River there. We have to, that we've never done before, but that's been given to, assigned to us. Um, and now the new bridge they just did on uh, Sawmill, it's about 650 feet. That, yeah. We just we were just told we got to do that now too. We keep getting these new things we have to do, and nobody talks to us. Before. And no new men. Yeah. So. How how did we, we get it how did we do with the last storm? Did we have more guys come in, or what what happened? Uh, so we had guys Friday, uh, Saturday. It was mostly ice this past Saturday. They came. Right. A couple of guys stayed with Public Works Friday night. One of our guys stayed in and they would, you know, we have to keep the uh, police department, especially that sidewalk, we have yeah. to keep free of ice. Um, and then uh, three guys came in Saturday morning. And then I think all but one, almost the entire crew came in this morning early at six, because again, there was some icing going on. Oh, good. Okay. Oh. Um, and, and I forgot to mention that storm on Saturday, we had three, three of our CMO guys came too. So we, you know, we had the help that we needed. And one guy from the transfer station came to help us. But uh, Tony was out. He was sick. And so I, I was scr scrambling around to try to get help for the guys. And we got it. We got it done. Yes, so, you sure did. Well done. Yeah. But it was, it was them, not me. The guys did the work and they did a good job getting it all done. It's the crew. Well done. Yeah. yeah. Okie okay, doke. Hey, any other questions for Rick on his report? No. All right, moving on to the next one. I don't have my papers with me because I'm driving now, so. <laughs> I'm back. Next one is, what we, next one is um, building maintenance. Yeah. Mr. Rake. Right. So make, um, well, one thing I'll just comment on the tables. I think we talked about we had ordered the tables. They're in. Oh. And Tom, I made a note there that people are really happy with the, the quality of them. Um, yes, they are. I will uh, attest to that. And, and the other thing I'll just mention, that he, Todd's been helping with uh, getting quotes on um, the repairs that, that we have approved. Um, 
for the Bittner Park building, uh, new roof, new partitions, uh, new toilets. It'll be the flush, um, touchless uh, flush toilets. Um, we have two quotes for the roof. I'm hoping to get one more and then uh, working on the uh, plumbing fixtures and the uh, partitions. And we're just going to get some quotes on, on those and hope to go to Board of Selectmen um, two weeks from today. Well, two weeks from tomorrow, the 22nd, will be their next meeting to get them uh, to approve it because it's over $7,500, which the roof is 10000 They have to approve it. But we have $40,000 that we've been given uh, to do that work. So uh, we should be okay between the roof and the partitions and the, the plumbing work. I think we'll be okay. Good luck. All right. Are we going on? Yeah. Can't see. Clear. Moving on. All right. So we'll, well, the next one I have here is the um, Ellen's Recreation Supervisor's Report. One comment oh. on it. If you have questions on anything, the, the, the mooring for the buoy, um, I don't want to give you a go back of you know a huge amount of detail, but about five, six, seven years ago, I had applied to DEP to put just a, a marker buoy out so um, people know where, how far they can go out to swim because there's nothing that tells you to stop. Um, and DEP wouldn't allow us to do it. So we spoke with um, the Harbor Management Commissioner, and he said that he can approve a, a mooring buoy, which is the same idea. All we need is a, we just want something that's in the water, the lifeguards can say you can't swim past that, you know, whatever it is. Because a number of years ago, uh, I saw a swimmer way out by the channel, the buoy that's way out there, it's 600 feet. And if, if somebody went down out there, there's no way somebody can rescue you. It's way too far. Um, it was way, way out of the zone where a lifeguard could safely get to them. So um, DEP said no. Um, it was really, quite frankly, I think a crazy reason they said because the house that lives the house that's next door to the beach to the west uh has a uh, a, a boat launch and they said that if we designate as a swim area have a buoy out there he can't launch his boat and i said well that's crazy it's been it's been a swim area for probably 50 years it is a swim area so i'm not talking about putting ropes up and block it off just one buoy so our lifeguards can say you can't swim past that so he just said, uh, tell them they can't go past the jetty. Well, the problem is at high tide, you can't see the, the end of the jetty. So anyway, long story short is um, uh, I had Alan fill out the application for it. It's a $25 fee, no big deal. But we'll be able to get that buoy out there. And we'll start with that. Um, if, it, if it's helpful and it works, then great. If not, we need to do bigger than some of you. I don't know if any of you remember, but many, many years ago before I was here, they used to actually rope it off like uh, Quantapod. They actually mm -hmm. had buoys and ropes to rope in a swim area. I don't think I we need to do that. I remember I'm not that. Sure we need to do that, but I think, you remember that, Diane? I do. <laughs> yeah, I do too. But I, but I think that at the very least we can, you know, the buoy, at least an individual buoy, show, it, there's a visual that the lifeguards can point to. You can't go past that, you know? So we'll start with that, see how it works out. So that's what, well, that, that, that's, what that, that's in there for. Yeah, I'm actually well, surprised I, that I, didn't need to be in place a long time ago. Yeah, we I remember talking about this years ago. Yeah. And you okay. coming up with that with the reason. And and yeah. I'm thinking to myself, what's to protect the swimmers from um, people on jet skis or, or other craft encroaching upon the swimming area? And you need to have some type of a uh, designated marker to say you cannot cross this area. And, exactly, especially with the especially with the docks being right there. I mean it's yes. next door, you know? So I would, yeah. uh, I, I'm, I'm with you, Rick. I, I hope we can get more than one to it to at least uh, uh, make it safer for anybody who wants to go swimming and, and try to do laps out in the water there. Lawrence, were you trying to break in? You're, you're uh, muted, Lawrence. Yeah, uh, two questions, Rick. Um, you might have said it, but how far would this buoy be out from the high tide mark? I think it's about a hundred feet. We might go a little farther than that, but the, the edge of the, the end of the jetty, it's about a hundred feet roughly. Mm. And, and, you know, a Quantipog, the uh, rope area we have is it's the same thing. It's about a hundred feet out. Yeah. So it'd be kind of like that distance. The, the, the problem, low, you know, low tide, many of you may know, you, you really can't swim there. You really have to go far out to swim low tide. But, you know, if you have to accept it's really a mid tide, high tide swimming beach, you know, it's not, you know, I, I, I call it the shoe sucking muck. You know, you can walk through that stuff that you're wearing water shoes, it takes them right off. And you get 
sync up to your calves, you know, mm -hmm. that stuff. Pretty nasty. Yeah. Uh, Rick, question number yeah. two, uh, uh, an Allen uh, closed report. Uh, who are skate guards and what do they do on her last, uh, from Bill Pond skating, she mentioned skate guards. What do, what do they do and what's yeah, your function? They, they, uh, they keep the fire going. Um, if there's a problem with somebody on the ice, uh, and actually we did have an incident where a man fell and um, uh, hit his head. Uh, and they, you know, they attended to him. They filled out a little incident report. Uh, he didn't have to be taken by ambulance or anything. I think it's, you know, somebody drove him home, but um, it, it's just staff who are there in case, you know, you need him for something, but they keep the fire going too. They're the other ones who watch the fire. Uh, uh, these are full-time uh, park and rec employees? No, no, they're uh, part-time. They're part-time park and rec? Yeah. They're part-time part yeah. park and rec employees? We, we pay them. And they're, they're basically just, skate guards they're, they're hired for that that's about it although let me step back one of them is a lifeguard in the summer you know and he was just looking for some part-time work in the winter whenever we're open he's one of the guys uh there are a few other people i think we have four four or five different skate guards who are available this year okay so it's people you specifically hire for that it's not like you take uh, you know part-time park rec employees and just throw no. them over at the mill pond for the uh for the uh yeah. for the winter these are specific employees that you hire for that one function. Okay, thank you. The other thing they do is they put the uh, hockey goals out and they take them back in each night and they also make sure they're separated enough so that kids yeah. who are playing hockey aren't, you know, running into little kids who are, you know, you know, trying to skate. So they kind of keep it up. With that. We always hire two. There's always two there at every time. <clears throat> So Rick, I have a question. When we, I know we've um, sort of postponed the youth programs. When do we foresee them coming back, or don't we? Or uh, we started some this week. This we are week. going back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we had a preschool class that Taryn is is running. Uh, uh, boy, I forgot what it was called. Um, no, that's okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it started today. Uh, she was in fact Ruth. Ruth was helping her with it today. Um, five little preschool kids in it. And I'll tell you, just seeing life in that preschool Good. room. Oh, it just. Made my heart, you know, feel great because uh, we had little kids in the building again. And just just to let everybody know, the beach passes are in, and they're working on those, so we're, we're prepping for summer. Yeah. And the other thing I would suggest to people is take a walk in through the bottom floor, the first floor of the building, because Taryn and Ellen did a phenomenal job of decorating for the holiday. They're really doing a beautiful job, and the building is looking gorgeous. So, yeah. get it. Yeah, the new gym is it looks really nice. We were there on Saturday. Doesn't it? Yeah. Were you there for the yeah. peanut basketball? Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. we had a blast. Yeah. Rick, right. when, when was that building built? 1993 is when we moved in. January 15th, 93. Just, uh, yeah. just about 28 years ago. Yeah. I mean, when you walk through the building, it doesn't look like a building that's almost 30 years old. No. We've worked hard to keep it up, upgraded. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Seniors report. Any questions or comments other than then lunches are growing slowly but surely. I'll mention the one in her third paragraph. She talked about that Beyonder. Um, it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, it's a tour. They just did one of Germany uh, recently. It got canceled because of the snow. Um, I think we had 50 people sign up. They're going to come in and uh, watch on the you know the big screen. It's like a live tour. Somebody is there doing the. It's a virtual tour. Somebody's there with a like a camera, you know, a head camera, whatever you call it, um, and um, and walking through. It. So she's got a few other ones she wants to set up because that went so well. I think it only. Rose, you might know. Was it ten dollars? It was it was cheap to sign no, up for. It. it was it was for, it was the 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 tour is free, and yeah. the lunch was five dollars. Was for the lunch, right. yeah. For the lunch. So what we what they ended up doing is they did the lunch the following uh, the following day on Friday, which was the birthday lunch. But they gave people the opportunity to come in, and we had a really big lunch that day. Right. And I think I'm so sorry I'm missing it, but they're doing Milan this week. Mm -hmm. I know. I looked at the website after reading Terry's notes and it looks really cool. I mean, it, it, I, it, I, it looks cool. I'm so upset I'm missing it. I, I really, <laughs> I really wanted to do that. Like I, I didn't realize it was actually, you know, it's actually a tour guide going through. Yeah. I think there is a place so live. Think, There's some that were presentations, but some that seemed like they were like live walking. Yeah. The, the, the fee I believe we paid was $60 for it, for everybody. It was 60 bucks. 
not for person, but to, to be part of this tour. That's, you know, that was the cost that we had, but that's it. I mean, it's a very inexpensive program and, and pretty exciting. Um, yeah, Milan's right, so From Terry, is, is, do they, they actually do actual tours when right. possible? So yeah. would they take us to Milan? Mm -hmm. Now there's a tour guide. Right. A bunch of, bunch of uh, she showed me the whole list of some of their options. Yeah, that's good. And our buses are busier than ever. Yep. Any other questions on the seniors report? So we're still trying to get, get, get into Canada later this year? Yeah, Quebec keeps getting put off. <laughs> no, I have them drive all a tractor the truckers right in there very easily. No, you don't. All right, Anthony's report. Just one as you know, we just already talked a lot about it, but highlight you see a lot of what they were doing had to do with Mill Pond. Right. Hey, Rick, what's this uh, built stone wall at Nut Plains? The contractors can't dump in the area. So uh, the second to the last line, line item. Yeah, I think what that was is, is so we have, we, uh, we allow, um, Tree companies to bring mulch there when we need it because um, you know the several times a year we have to add mulch into the dog park and the volunteers do a lot of that we might take the pile you know bring it in with a bucket and make piles and then the volunteers spread it out um, but I think what Tony was talking about there is that um, there's a section there where they were dumping and we don't want them to dump we have a, a, a place where there's a chain <clears throat> if we know they're coming and, and there's room to bring mulch there we open the chain up and then we, you know, we tell them where to dump it. So I, there's a place I think that, that we don't want them to dump. And that's what I think he was talking about. He put this stone wall that's keeping from backing up into that area there. But it's, it's a good deal. It's a good deal for everybody. It's a win, win, win because the, um, these tree companies need a place to put their, their uh, wood chips, right? And we need them for the dog park. So it's something I worked out, I think back when we opened the place, uh, appealed to different uh, tree companies that, hey, if you got wood chips, looking for a place to put them, bring them here because we need them. <laughs> so we okay, get so did, I, I, would, I, I would thought maybe it was, uh, contractors are dumping, um, you know, billing debris and illegal dumping type of thing, but it's I'll not, okay. Tony, but no, I'm pretty sure I had to do with the, uh, the wood chips. It's just not gotcha. putting them Thank you. Okay. All right, standing commission reports, standing fields. Standing fields. Uh, let's see. No agenda, no quorum, no meeting. Good report. Green committee. <laughs> no meeting. Wow. Uh, land acquisition. Nothing to report. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Splash pad. I think uh, Rick kind of covered it in his report that, you know, he met with Mandy in the um, construction down there. And hopefully we will start clearing so that we can get started. That is so great. Yeah, I, I had a call in to, or an email today to the, um, uh, the the vendor we're doing that we have the contract with to uh, find out when are they going to come down there because I met with them three weeks ago maybe, uh, and they said they're going to come and start doing some excavation soon. Of course, we got all that snow, and that might have sent them back. But I want to make sure they let me know when they're going to go down there, so I know they're there and they'll just show up and start digging. Um, so I'll, um, I, I'm hoping soon, you know, tomorrow, I hope I hear back when, when they're going to be there. Okay. All right. Unfinished business box lacrosse. Uh, really not much more. I did talk with, uh, the, uh, youth lacrosse folks. And, um, I think we mentioned last time they have the wetlands are marked. Their next step is to get on board with a uh, surveyor to uh, survey the area, um, get, Get the wetlands marked on their map, and then they got to go to planning and zoning, or wetlands. If they're um, if they're more than hundred feet away from where the wetlands are, then they don't need wetlands approval, I, I believe. Uh, if you're less than hundred feet, then I have to go to wetlands commission, and I'll be happy to go with them. But um, they got to get the uh, survey done and, and kind of plot out where this is going to go on the property there, and then they'll know, you know, if it's within that hundred feet or not. But they know they 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 know that's their next step that they have to do that. Good. Okay. All right. The budget hearing. Um, yeah, you pretty much covered that. The only thing I was going to add is that um, 
I mean, thankfully, they uh, the board does not at this point think that we need to increase uh, the cost of lunches for the seniors or or the Meals on Wheels. So that's kind of important for them. So, so but they are giving us money to they are giving us extra money in order to cover the loss. Okay, so they are going to subsidize the the additional loss. They are. Oh, okay. good. They that's are. wonderful. I'm I'm ninety nine percent sure that's not going to get cut. Yeah. Well, so what they did do those is Mary Jane contacted me uh, last week. Uh oh. We we had asked for sixty thousand. Um, yeah. They're going to cut us back to twenty seven, which is the current amount. But they're right. going to. They're going to cover the rest of that with other if funds. It has so, to be whatever it is over. They'll they'll cover it for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and based and on you know, that. you don't want to put that huge amount in a budget and then have to go back and cut it after it looks awful. So I mean, that's right. fair enough. So they've already cut that. So our our I don't know what our budget increase now is. It was like seven percent, but you know, if we cut out about thirty thousand dollars, I mean, that's a pretty big chunk we cut out. So um, oh, and they, I think they're going to cut. Uh, a few thousand dollars we had in from water for the splash pad because the money the donation that came in and the donations we had already received is going to cover the water for probably a couple of years so um they, they cut that so other than that i mean I, th I think we're gonna be in pretty good shape i mean from what what i've heard so far from mary jane we look like other than those two things we, we should be okay so, Rick, the splash pad that's going to have a separate water meter on it is that correct I don't. I don't think so. I think it'll be the same meter as uh, Jacobs. Probably did. We have two meters in now. We have domestic, you know, showers, toilets, and irrigation. I think it's probably in the same meter as the domestic one. I think so. Um, th there'll be two meters. Probably not three. I I'm pretty sure they're going to just tap right into that one. Okay. All right. Interior lighting. Oh, sorry, Rose. The only thing I to, did want to mention the, the budget hearing where the presentation is going to be for the public oh, and everything. Yes, yes, yes. Mar yes. Mar March 7th, and I believe that's all going to be Zoom. Usually it's at the community center, um, but I believe uh, from uh, Tracy at the Selectman's office, at this point, their plan is to, to, to have it be Zoom. And when is it again? I'm sorry. Mar March 7th. And I believe it usually starts about 7.30. But that's where, you know, Dr. Freeman presents his budget, Matt presents yeah. his budget. It's the budget information thing. And then the, that's, I think that's a Tuesday. Then the uh, Thursday would be the workshop where they, they start debating it. No, no March, March 7th. March 7th, March is, a 7th March. is our next meeting. Yeah. It's our next meeting. It's a Monday. Monday. Oh. Yeah, you're right. It's a Monday. Usually it's a Tuesday. Well, I think, I believe the next Thursday is when the, the actual, yeah, that's, yeah, we'll have to talk about that, what we're going to do. Well, if our meeting is at 6 30, if it's a short agenda, uh, we can jump That's on. Happened before this happened before to us, and yeah. we met quickly and then gone down to their meeting. Yeah, but again, I think it's going to be Zoom, so it won't be in the community center. But we can meet quickly and then zoom into their meeting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've done oh, that before. Yeah, we can all talk fast. <laughs> Have they set the uh, date for the uh, referendum? Uh, I don't know what it is. Usually it's in April sometime. Yeah, I know but that. after that hearing, then then usually that Thursday would be the the workshop where they debate about what they're going to cut or not cut. You know, the board the board of finance. Um, and then if they need a second workshop, they go the following week. Right. Usually the referendum is the first Tuesday after the first Monday. In April. In, in April. April. Yeah, yeah. Like I think it was like April sixth last year or something like that. So it's it's around there. Okay. <coughs> All right. 50 driveway. Oh, we had interior lighting. Um, did you skip oh, that I'm one? I'm sorry, interior lighting. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Yeah, uh, well, we have the lights. That, if you remember, again, it's all the wall lights right. on the Whitfield room and Guilford room are being replaced. We have them. They arrived last week. And uh, PEC Electric is coming in on... Um, February 21st, that's President's Day, so the building is closed. So there's no conflict with us having to oh, cancel right. any papers or anything. Good. So they can come in that day and, and uh, put, them up, put them in. So we'll have Great. all that new wall lighting uh, uh, that day. Good. I know people are commenting about how dark the room is, so that'll be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're up to 50 driveway. 
Well, s slow movement because, you know, again, we, we were originally pushing it uh, to try to get out of that, the lease of the, uh, the, uh, garage, the uh, what do you call it, trailer, the office trailer, but we're tying into that lease until December 31st of 22. So, you know, I, I pulled the heat back a little bit. I, sorry, what do you mean heat? <laughs> the pressure, I was trying to pressure it to get that thing done. But, um, uh, and, and Steve Nightoff has been, been out uh, with a hip replacement. So uh, hopefully he'll be back soon because he's been working with us on that. Um, so the, the push to get out, there's not a big push to get out right now because we're, we're stuck with the lease anyway. Um, but I still hope we'll get out of there by, by spring. You know, in the winter it gets construction going, it has to be done. We are paying bills right now for oil there. And every two weeks we're getting an oil bill. That thing just chews up oil like crazy. Um, it's around $200, $250 every two weeks we're paying for oil right now. Um, and that's in the, what, in the In the portable? No, not in the portable. No, in the uh, the new building. The, well, the, the driveway. We're paying the, the oil bill right now. So we may be short. We put $8,000 in the budget. And I, I got that based on... Uh, well, Let's go back a minute. You're saying that you're saying that uses a lot of oil there to heat that building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we're going to be paying that all the time once we move there. Right. All right. So we're going to have higher oil bills, basically, is what you're uh, telling us. Yes. But Rick, Rick, is that because the building, you know, has been sitting for a while and isn't like really insulated and set up the way we want? Will that change, do you think, or the oil usage is going to stay the same? It might change a little because there were some uh, some leaky drafty areas that Steve and Todd patched up, um, but we're not even inhabiting it yet. We're just keeping the temperature mostly like at fifty degrees because we don't, you know we don't want pipes to freeze and stuff. Um, you know we've been in there a little bit. I think the guys been painting some picnic tables in there, but I mean even that they're keeping it like at sixty or sixty two. It's not like hot, you know. Um, I think you know it's a big building. There's a lot of uh, the roof is high. Uh, it's going to take a lot to heat that place. Um, the oil estimate we have was based on, I contacted the company that was servicing that place with the previous owner. And I asked, you know, typically what did they spend over the course of the year there? And I got, I got that number and that's, that's what we used in our budget. But um, of course, oil prices are higher now too. So I think we're going to be, without question, we're going to be over budget next year. Um, and it's not even in our budget this year, but, you know, we're paying it right now. <laughs> But uh, you know our utility budget might might not be as, as healthy at the end of this fiscal year as it normally is because we're we're doing that now. But so we're you know they're chipping away. I think the facilities guys are up there. They're painting the uh, plywood floor. Um, um, we've been working with a, a, a heating contractor. There was a, a blower fan that was clogged up, wasn't working properly. That might help a little bit. They they fixed that. Um, so we, you know, we're doing little things there, but we haven't really done any construction yet. We have to build some walls for an office for Tony, uh, a kitchen space for the guys. Um, you know, that all still has to happen. And I've been told that won't that won't come out of our budget. The finance director said there's a separate budget for building improvements like that. Uh, so any of the bills will go to that account. It won't be coming out of our account. So that's good. Rose, you're muted. Sorry, I'm muted because Dennis came in. Um, Jacob, uh, parking lot improvements. So um, it's a mess. If you go down there now, you'll notice the potholes are so bad. You, you'll lose your to go more than one mile an hour. <laughs> it's like, you know, you have to drive up, you know. It, it's bad. Um, and so Public hard. Works does the best they can, you know, to every year they backblade it with their um, their loader and they, they you know, fill stone in and roll it. But, a pothole isn't going to go away. So I had recommended that we dig some test pits there and find out what's underneath all that. And maybe, you know, maybe the plan is going to be to rip it all out. I'm just imagining, you know, maybe rip out a foot deep and put in good, better draining stone and then the uh, three quarter inch process on top of that. But Mike Ott, the engineer, is working with us on this. Um, they were going to do test pits. Two weeks ago, there in the septic, um, which is under new business, the septic improvements, uh, Public Works was going to dig those test pits. But I guess the day they were going to do it, it was brutally cold, uh, like wind chills, like 10 below or something. And so they didn't do it. Um, Mike is trying to reschedule that for this week or next week. 
And since they're gonna be there for the septic anyway, do some test bits in the parking lot and let's see what's there. And then Mike is gonna work up a plan of what we need to do there. Um, I'm hoping that since we're not using funds that we're gonna be designated for the splash pad or the ARPA, uh, from the ARPA that uh, they might allow us to still use it at Jacobs Beach and improve that parking lot. In, in that center aisle, I think we talked about the center area where the weeds right. grow, the grass. Grow grass there. So maybe we can roll that all then together. Um, but we need a plan. We need an engineer to tell us uh, what's there and what do we need to do to make it better. Rick, do, do, uh, I've gone through that parking lot twice already and you're right, it's pretty uh, pretty dangerous for a car. Should we put a sign there and say travel at your own risk or should we close off the area to the right that's closest to the boardwalk? Because that's just, um, like Brother says, it's, it's awful. I would think the Board of Selectmen has to do that because they are in charge of parking lots, not us. Well, maybe we should send them a recommendation to have it done. Maybe we should, yeah. Because yeah. Uh, that's not something that we can actually do, I don't think. Okay. Well, I, I think the parking lots the, are not our, our uh, they're not under park and rec parking lots. Parking lots are down. I understand. I know. But I, I just think that we should, as a, as a board, send a recommendation. To the board of selectmen telling them that they anybody who goes into that parking lot travels at their own risk. I don't know if we could legally do that, but we could we could certainly put up something that says beware the potholes. Yes. Or fishing holes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can you check on that, Rick? I mean, I don't know if we can, you know, say travel at your own risk because it is town property, but can we put up something that just sort of warns people of potholes? Can you check with the town hall and see if we could do yeah. that? I'll make it that. The parking lot's closed after dark, right? So it's not like people are driving yeah. through there in the dark. It, it, it's open. I mean, it's, it's closed after dark, right? Well, we don't close the gate anymore because the, the Rangers right. only work until late November. So it's, it's just open all the time. I mean, they shouldn't be in there because it's, you know, technically parks closed at dusk, but, but the gate isn't closed anymore. It's just open all the time. Rick is, you know, we, we've we've gone through this several times with the with the parking lot being, um, you know, a, a pothole zone. You know, the the marina is paved. It's close to the shoreline. You know, the money that we saved from the donation for the um, splash pad, couldn't we take some of the allocation of that money and place it towards the paving of that parking lot? Well, you know, that's a good, you know, that's a good point, John, about the marina being paid, because I've been yeah. told that they won't approve us paving because it's close to the water down there. But you're right, the, the marina's paved. Um, but the marina's high. True. Yeah, well, and, well, and the thing, too, the thing, too, with potholes, I don't know if anyone has noticed just driving around with the cold, really cold weather we've had so far, there's a lot of potholes on, on major roads. It, cold weather does cause potholes, really mm -hmm. cold weather. So right. it, it sounds like it's just going to be an ongoing issue if we kind of don't try to, or they don't try to do something to correct it a little bit better, make it a little bit better. Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not an engineer, but the the way the potholes develop down there, so that's indicative of, it's you know, it's indicative of you put a park and if you pave that, it's going to be it's going to be ruined within a year or two. I, I can't imagine paving that. Well, when Superstorm Stanley came through it and tore up the marina parking lot, the town took the money and repaved the entire parking lot. Yeah, they put a bigger berm in there uh, of rocks, but still everything is paved all the way down to the boat landing and everything is paved all the way to the bridges over by the, uh, by the restaurants. So, um, I don't know, it, it seems like it would be a, an, uh, something to find out if they would do it because uh, we just can't keep trying to <laughs> dig out from these potholes every year uh, because they're just so so terrible. John, to that point, you just reminded me, reminded me uh, I did talk to our town engineer about that paving and she wasn't a big fan of it because um, like what happened at the marina, anytime we get those big storms that kind of cover that parking lot, she's concerned that it could heave, you get that, you know, ocean wave motion over it, that it could heave and then you know, it's one thing to replace stone, but to, if we have to start replacing parking lot, it'd be a, a much bigger cost. She she had yeah. that concern. So, so again, if the so I guess I'm not understanding if the if the parking lots 
our town maintenance. Correct? Correct. Why do we keep talking what? about it? <laughs> if there's really not much we can do about it, they have to do it. Well, I'm just, thank you. <laughs> I'm just suggesting oh, that as, as a board, no, we make a recommendation or request to see whether or not uh, the parking lot can be um, paved. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I, I hate to say this, and I don't, I don't mean to sound uh, critical. I don't think the townspeople really understand the difference between the delineation of the parking lot being uh, reserved for the uh, for the board of selectmen's office versus the park and recreation commission who runs the beach. They right. just look at it as one big park. And yeah, then, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. And and there should be some type of oversight for the one big park. And to start, you know, saying that's not my job uh, doesn't give us a pretty good light. I'm sorry to say. Well, if I if I get pipe, no, but the beginning, Rick has been reporting. Rick said, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Rose. I mean, the town is looking at it. Rick's sort of helping them along, even though it's not park and Rick's responsibility. But they are looking at it. They are looking. They're having surveyors come in. They're checking it all out. I think we need okay. to give them time to do what they need to do. Well, since they've made oh, the decision you. to take them over, Rose, then what I was we say. need to thank nudge you. them along to make them aware of the fact that it's it reflects poorly on the image of the park. Mm -hmm. so it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, I'm never to I'm never to the inclination to say it's it's not my job. It's all of our jobs. It, you know, yeah. but all I'm saying is we keep it seems like every year we keep talking about the same thing. Right. It, is the town going to do something or do they like to keep going in and patching every two weeks? I, I don't know. You know? Yeah. yeah. So well, let's, you know, let's no. I mean, this is the first time that, that I remember them really getting some serious uh, people to look at it and doing some serious studying on it. Right. So I think sure. we need to just sit back and let them do do it and see what happens. All right. Well, I think you ought to include Chittenden Park in that uh, in that equation as well, because Chittenden Park is another place uh, in Rose. Your your friends like to go down there and play bocce. Well, um, <laughs> that part that part, and and we use that for our own recreation for. Um, uh, youth soccer down there. Um, you know, it's it's you you invite people from out of town to come play soccer, and the next thing you know, they're bouncing around uh, uh, terribly in that parking lot. It, it's not a good image. Okay. So so again, it's up to the engineers. Uh, I think the summary really is that and Mike got who you know he worked with us for the pickleball courts, and he's he's working with. Uh, uh, Sonia Marino for the septic issue there, Jacobs. Um, and I asked him if he, since he's doing that, I said, can you help us with the parking lot? So let's see what they come up with. Uh, he's, he's, okay. he's, he's a pretty smart guy and he knows we gotta do something better than what's there. Well, let's see what the next 30, 60 days do for us. That'll be great. Yeah. Okay, so you sort of tied in. Anything else that we need to uh, talk about Jacob's sec septic, Rick? Uh, yeah. No, no, work other than, uh, you know, Mike Ott and Sonia Marino are working on it, uh, right. just, just doing the test bits and getting the approvals they have to do. But they, they know that we'd like to get that done before we open up, um, you know, right. actually before mid-April, I think we should try to get it done. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, I realize this is an uh, off-the-wall question, but do we have city water down at um, Jacob's Beach? Yes. We do. Because yeah. I thought I saw a fire hydrant down there under the snow the other day, but I wasn't one hundred percent certain as to whether or not the beach was was fully uh, piped in for um, uh, city water. That, that's one of the reasons the splash pad is going there, John. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. City water is Long Hill. Okay, those are parks, so that's why uh, it's there. Makes sense. I, I just just wanted to confirm it in my head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you uh, you spoke about the marker buoy already. Rose, I do have one other news business, if, if you don't mind. Um, and this yeah. is really John and Tara probably. Um, yeah. we, we probably should look at revising the uh, field use policy. I, I think our fees are outdated now, especially for the rental. If somebody rents a field with lights at Binder Park, it costs half of what it costs to rent lights at the high school. And I think we should try to be a little consistent with that. The, the fee we have goes way back to 
I, I mean, it goes along maybe 25 years ago or 20 years ago, I figured out whatever it cost for our electric bills and the $25 an hour or whatever. I think it's way more than that now. Um, and we're getting more and more premier teams and non-resident teams that are wanting to use fields. So I, I think we have to kind of relook at that policy a little bit. So I was going to suggest that maybe, you know, we, we reinvigorate, reinvigorate or whatever, reinstitute the committee, which I think Tara, I think it was Tara and John, right? And yeah. then uh, John Kennedy, maybe from the field committee, who was on it? Somebody else was on it. Um, there's one other guy from the field committee who's not on field committee anymore, but I thought about talking with Kennedy and see if one or two, two people from that group would like to meet and just relook at it. And maybe we keep it as it is, you know, or take a look and, I think Ellen has some thoughts about she's getting more and more requests from premier type uh, teams that are not part of like Little League or soccer or the local youth organization. There are a lot of split out groups now. Um, and, you know, maybe we should think about, you know, if the fees should stay the same or make something different. Do you have a cost per hour for running the lights at uh, Bittner? Park? Well, I've got to revise it, not, not to refigure it out, but um, we, we did it. The $25 was based on probably 20 years ago, you know, what it costs us. And so, uh, you know, it's obviously way more than that now, but I know we're charging 25 uh, at the high school, they charge 50. So we're half of what they're charging. And I don't know if you number. Sorry, what? Tara, are you willing to start looking into this? Sure. Yeah. I, I was gonna say, this is the first thing I did when I joined this commission. I, know. I totally didn't know anybody or anything. Um, Welcome aboard. Um, but I'm surprised because we must have talked about lights, John. Like you know, the cost. We went through everything. Down into the lights. I, I just remember more of the idea of, of, of uh, constructing a fee schedule based upon yeah. resident versus out of town resident. Um, yeah. So, so Tara, you and John are going to do to represent us on that? Sure. So better to me. All right. Okay, All right. and I'll check with uh, John Kennedy about you know the field committee too. Yes. Oh no, no. They're, they'll just be our park people. Then whoever from field. Yeah. But yeah, let's let them take a look at that and see what they can uh, recommend to us. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any other business? Nope. I just should mention because Nick didn't say anything. Nick, I think you sent me an email. Did, did you say this is your last meeting? It will be. I, I was I was on the fence here. We were talking about my my wife and I, and then amidst the chaos here this evening, and it seems that every first Monday of the month here we have just just chaos and it's a rush around the house so um this will be it I'm not saying I'll never come come back here um but I think once we've kind of smoothed over in in our world and all of that I'd be happy to rejoin have you and when I don't have a two 18 month olds and a three-year-old running around <laughs> yeah. well I'm sorry we never really got to have a meeting face to face <laughs> no, I know. And I think once I, I, once we kind of get back to that, I'd be interested in coming back and and rejoining the group. Nick, don't don't blink because they'll be driving soon and then you'll feel Tara's pain. Yeah. And then there'll be young adults and you'll feel the rest of our pain. So no, I was it was funny. We were, my niece uh, just turned four and we were at her. her uh, it was at um, oh, I forget what that farm is over over in North Guilford. Dudley. Um, what, what's that? Dudley, Dudley farm? farm. Yes. Yeah, down we the were street there, from me. That's my neighborhood. My, yeah, she's a little older than my son. I saw the four balloon, and I remember like a week <laughs> after she was born, I was like, no way. Now we're getting into like kindergarten and all this uh -huh. elementary school stuff. I'm like, no, 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 no. This this the is happening too fast. I'm not the ready. The days for this. are very the days are very, very, very long. Mm -hmm. And the years are short. And I'm telling you, somebody told me that when my kids were your age, and I did not believe them. And here oh. we are. No, we're looking at we're so, starting to look at the Guilford Lakes and all that. And it's just like, yeah. wow, this was a great time. It's a great yeah, time. Absolutely. I don't think it ever registered to me that you have twins, Nick. Because I don't I think it did to me either. The mine are 16. So I was definitely oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah. And um yep. I had people like me now talking to people like where you are now saying, You it's gonna go so fast, it's it's easy, you know, all these things. And I, I can't believe I'm that old lady now with this the teenage twins instead <laughs> of the little baby ones, but I know the, the driving lesson thing scares me. It scares me with one of them. The other one, I think, will be fine. The other one, <laughs> the one doing donuts in the Walmart parking lot. There's always got to be that one. <laughs> there's she, there, I have one. It was, it was a one, my son's mini me. I got one who's real mellow. She's kind of a worry ward. And then my the other one, the the um the youngest one by three minutes is um an absolute animal. 
<laughs> Love Nick, it. Nick, the only advice I can give you. And they change dramatically. Nick, the only advice I give you, people are talking about driving. Your kids are going to drive like you drive. Oh, no. <laughs> Trust me. So, God help you. Someone well, needs to get Guilford police a race. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So you need to drive the way you're supposed to drive. That's great. If Lawrence. you don't, your kids are going to drive exactly the oh, way you man. drive. Trust me. They won't drive the 1991 <laughs> Buick Park Avenue, though. Where's the fun in yeah. that? Hey, hey, my, my advice for you is that I had three okay. kids, and uh, the last two, we didn't let them drive until they were 18. You'd be surprised oh. how much money you can save off of that. It's true. Sure. I don't know if that'll work, but I like that in front. <laughs> And hopefully the potholes at Jacob's Beach will be fixed by then. So, <laughs> oh man, and that's our favorite place to go. It was funny. We were um, for my son's birthday. It was in August of last year. We did this party with the family at the tent and the Paw Patrol and all this. And we took that Monday off. And I remember sitting there, and you would. We went to Jacob's Beach. We got like chicken nuggets at McDonald's, and he was light years happier just running around that park than he was with all the. the and whistles that we had uh, sure. i really love it down there yeah i just want to go on record i like potholes because they slow people down this is true <laughs> <laughs> well nick so thank I, you i'm not for, totally for being pothole. on park and rec no it's been a blast i mean i, I we wanted enjoyed to do having this you. Yeah. Sorry, it's been wonderful thank yeah, you for thank, thank you. you for everybody's Thanks hospitality yes. through, Keep thank in touch. You for serving. and claire yeah, you're not seeing the last of me i promise Good. <laughs> Claire, thank you for starting the meeting for me. Sorry, I had to go dark, but that's okay. I was, we were just, yes. Thank you for starting it for me. <laughs> Anytime. We, we, we couldn't get the hotel uh, internet to work too well. So it's all good. All right, a motion to adjourn, please. I'll make, make a, motion a motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. Favor. I second it. Aye. 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 Good night. Thank I'm you. still here. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good, night. Good night, everybody. Good night, y'all. All right. Okay, recording it. Remember that Monday, March 7th. Right. <laughs>